Hello, my name is Namchana. I've been working in the respiratory assessment unit in St. James Hospital for the past nine years. Part of my job involves assessing patients for oxygen therapy, both in the inpatient and outpatient setting. In this video education session, I'm going to share information with you on oxygen therapy. There's so much information out there about oxygen therapy, but for this session, we'll explore 10 most important points that you should be aware of about oxygen therapy. What is oxygen therapy? Oxygen helps to feed blood cells to help all parts of your body work properly. Each one of us needs oxygen to function. However, some people in certain lung conditions don't get enough oxygen through normal breathing. Oxygen therapy is there for the treatment they would receive to supplement their oxygen needs. It is recommended when the oxygen blood level are deemed too low for the body to function well. To help you understand oxygen therapy, this education session will focus on the following points. One, who needs oxygen therapy? Two, referral for oxygen therapy. Three, oxygen assessment. Four, prescription. Five, types of oxygen equipment. Six, oxygen education. Seven, risk assessment. Eight, communication. Nine, holiday oxygen. And ten, follow-up. So who needs oxygen therapy? Low oxygen levels can make you feel short of breath, tired, confused. Some people may show skin color changes, that is bluish, restlessness, drowsiness, and even headaches. Patients with the following conditions are more likely to require oxygen therapy. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, interstitial lung disease, ILD, heart failure, cystic fibrosis, and uh, palliative patients. The first step that all patients in need of oxygen go through is the referral. Most patients are refer referred to the oxygen clinic by their general practitioner or the hospital consultant. When the referral is received by the oxygen clinic, an appointment is arranged for you to attend the oxygen clinic for an initial assessment. If you are just recovering from chest infection or flare-up, the test will be deferred for six weeks post flare-up. This is to ensure that the test is done as close to your baseline as possible. However, discretion can be exercised for those who get flare-ups frequently that they cannot reach their baseline. Thereafter, an oxygen assessment is arranged. So at present, oxygen assessment is conducted only in the hospital setting. When you attend for oxygen assessment, two procedures are carried out. The first procedure is a blood sample taken from the wrist. This test shows the amount of oxygen in your body at the time of the assessment. The normal level of oxygen in the blood is supposed to be between 11 and 14 kilopascals. This has a cutoff point depending on your condition. For example, if you have COPD, the cutoff point to get oxygen at rest is 7.3 kilopascals. If you have COPD and heart condition, the cut point to get oxygen at rest is 8 kilopascals. The second test is the six-minute six walk test. This is the second part of the assessment for oxygen. To do this test, the nurse or the healthcare professional will ask you on will walk you on the flat for six minutes at your usual pace while measuring the oxygen level using a pulse oximetry. This test determines whether your oxygen level drops when you walk or not. You may need ambulatory oxygen if you drop your oxygen level during the six-minute walk test below 90%. A reassessment is arranged three weeks after the initial oxygen assessment, and should there be an indication that you require oxygen therapy, then an oxygen order is made. So now we can look at the prescription. Should the oxygen assessment indicate that you require oxygen at rest, that is oxygen level less or equal to 7.3 kilopascals, then long-term oxygen therapy will be recommended. Long-term oxygen therapy is provision of oxygen for continuous use at home for a minimum of 15 hours per day for patients with low oxygen levels. In some cases, it can be used up to 24 hours. Oxygen must be prescribed by a healthcare professional. In most cases, patients who require oxygen at rest may also need oxygen, ambulatory oxygen. It is not unusual to be 
prescribed both long-term oxygen therapy and the ambulatory oxygen therapy at the same time. Ambulatory oxygen therapy is the supplementary oxygen used during exercise or activities of daily living. Both the long-term oxygen therapy and the ambulatory oxygen therapy are titrated by the healthcare professional to determine the flow rate and how many hours to use it each day. Any changes to the prescription thereafter should be made in consultation with the oxygen clinic. All oxygen prescription for medical card holders go through the HSC community office for approval to rent the equipment for you. Non-medical card holders rent the equipment for themselves but can claim money back through the drugs repayment scheme. So when the oxygen prescription is done, the next thing that we have to look at is types of equipment. The oxygen equipment that are currently available on the Irish market are the oxygen concentrator. The machine makes its own oxygen by extracting it from the air, and as such, it requires enough room for air circulation. The machine should not be put in an enclosed space or wardrobe, as this will disrupt its function. It can deliver up to 95% oxygen at 1 liter per minute, but concentration drops up to 84% at 4 liters. Some oxygen concentrators that, like the home fuel, enables you to fill your own ambulatory oxygen cylinders. The advantages of the concentrator is that they are economical when uh, constant use is necessary. The next one is portable oxygen cylinders. These come in small and large size. Portable oxygen cylinders are usually used in conjunction with the conserver device so that the oxygen in the cylinder can last longer. Cylinders have to be refilled each time they, they are empty. Therefore, the patient has to contact the oxygen supplier for collection of empty cylinders and replacement. The portable oxygen cylinders are also supplied with a backpack to make it easier to carry. Some people might find it easier to carry the portable oxygen around using an ox cart. It is advisable to order your oxygen your cylinder replacement before you start the last cylinder. The third equipment is the portable oxygen concentrators. These make their own oxygen and use rechargeable batteries, giving you peace of mind as there will be no fear of the oxygen running out. They are used for ambulation only. They can be carried on, a, on the aeroplane, should there be indication that you require in-flight oxygen. So after you have been prescribed the oxygen equipment, then the next thing that we have to look at is the oxygen education. Formal oxygen education is given at the time when the oxygen order is made to allay anxiety and ensure compliance. It is tailored towards the equipment that has been ordered for you it covers all aspects of oxygen use, operating the equipment, safety, keeping the equipment clean, turning it off when not in use, maintenance, ordering cylinder replacements, fire risks, and storage. You will also be advised that if your home oxygen was initiated at the time of discharge from the hospital, it can be removed when follow-up assessment show improvement in your oxygen level on room air. You also receive supportive written material for reference and uh, contact telephone numbers for the oxygen clinic, sometimes even for the uh, oxygen supplier. Did you know that you can go on holiday even though you are on oxygen? Should you decide to go on holiday, all you have to do is to contact your oxygen clinic for advice before booking your tickets. In case you are flying, you need to be assessed to determine your suitability to fly. If your holiday is, is within Ireland and you intend to stay in the hotel, your oxygen clinic can write a letter on your behalf requesting the oxygen supplier to lend you an oxygen concentrator if you are on long-term oxygen therapy for the duration of the stay. Oxygen should be used in a safe environment to avoid dangers of serious injury arising from self and self practices. Are you able to operate the equipment without danger of yourself? Does your dwelling have enough room to accommodate the oxygen equipment? 
do you live in with smokers and they are cooperative enough not to smoke around you while you are on oxygen? If these concerns outweigh the benefits, the oxygen supplier may not be able to deliver the oxygen to you. To prevent fire hazards, never smoke or operate the machinery that involve use of fire or let someone smoke near you when you are on oxygen. Store oxygen equipment in a well-ventilated room away from heat sources and clear of clutter to prevent potential fire ignition. Portable oxygen should not be carried under clothing or airtight bag. Some ambulatory oxygen equipment make their own oxygen, therefore they require air circulation around for them to do so. Failure to comply with safety advice or adhere to oxygen guidance sufficiently can lead to withdrawal of the equipment. When you are using oxygen, it is advisable that you communicate to get in touch with your oxygen clinic for advice on, on any questions or issues that you encounter as an oxygen user. Although oxygen therapy can improve your, low, your oxygen levels and help you breathe better, do not attempt to adjust the oxygen flow rate without the advice of the health professional. Using oxygen in high concentrations over several days can, can be toxic and lead to cough, substantial pain, short of breath, and dangers to the lungs. When you, are in, when you are commenced on oxygen therapy, the GP is also notified in writing so that they have baseline information about your treatment. So now look at the follow-up. Follow-up will depend on your condition. Ideally, you should be given an oxygen home visit four weeks after commencement of your oxygen therapy. Home visits may be helpful to identify problems with the equipment or setup. Another follow-up is recommended at 3, 6, and 12 months period. At each follow-up visit, a blood gas and 6-minute walk test are carried out and adjustments made to the prescription when necessary. In some cases, oxygen can be discontinued should it be deemed no longer necessary. In summary, oxygen is needed for the body to function properly. If you encounter breathing difficulties, the first stop is your GP and or consultant who will refer you to the oxygen clinic service. The oxygen clinic will carry out an assessment by taking and measuring your blood gas and conducting a six-minute walk test. Depending on the results of the two tests, oxygen may not or may not be ordered. The type of oxygen equipment and the oxygen flow rate you require will be specified on the order form, that is the prescription. Oxygen education is also given at this stage. Due to the to fire risks that are associated with oxygen, risk assessment is also carried out. Oxygen is not a restriction for you to go on a holiday. All you have to do is get in touch with the oxygen clinic for advice. A follow-up home visit four weeks after starting on oxygen will be arranged and further appointments at three, six, and 12 months period. Should you have any concerns about any issues raised in this video, please contact your local oxygen clinic or pulmonary rehabilitation team for advice. More information can also be found on the reference list. Thank you.